This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. So while growth has been outperforming value for years, as we all know, I, I know I sound like a broken record. I keep talking about this every week. But what about value stocks that also have the growth component? I've covered this pretty often on the podcast, but this week I thought I'd take a little bit different angle on where the growth comes from, um, because this would seem a pretty hot area if I could find a value stock that also had you know, growth on the sales side, on the revenue side. Are those really just unicorns? Are there any out there? I don't know, because I've never tried to screen for this. Whenever I tried to screen for growth, I've always done the earnings growth, not the not the sales growth. So this is new. Um, it was kind of exciting to see if I could find anything and what might show up in a screen looking for this kind of value, the value with the growth. It is a rare combination. Even if growth is in earnings, it's a rare combination, but certainly a value stock on an earnings uh, metric plus that sales growth out there. Um, so I, I was kind of uh, a little a little confused on how I would screen for this because again, most of our screens with value and the growth component are on the earnings side. So I had to kind of look around and then I decided while screening for this, that maybe I should start with just the growth component and then add in the value to it to get the value side, because the growth is kind of more important here on getting that sales revenue and trying to figure out a way to screen for that, because I can screen for like price to sales ratio. But again, that's different than like the actual revenue growth components. So so what I did was I started off scre screening only for the Zacks number ones, because I figure, well, if I'm going to do this kind of screen, looking for this this kind of rare combination, I want them to be number one so I get the rising earnings estimates. And I for sure should get that with the number ones. So that already tells you that the screen is going to be kind of narrow because there's only a little over 200 of the Zacks number ones. So I'm already narrowing it. Then um, I added the Zach style scores, which are on Zach's.com, and I did growth, not value, but growth for A to just get that component in there. So that also should give me, you know, some pretty good growth fundamentals within the style score. And then um, I tried to add in the sales component. And so what I used was a... Uh, feature that is this year's sales growth compared with next year's and it like takes like the combination of the two. Now we're already in September when I'm recording this. So it's like we're already heading into next year anyway. So this isn't a bad way to look at the, the growth because we already know what this year is, but we want to kind of combine it with next year, which hopefully for a lot of companies should be better. The pandemic should have been winding down. There won't be any lockdowns, hopefully, next year. And so the growth should be, you know, looking at, for most, uh, better heading into next year. So using that kind of combination, like where it is now heading into next year, should give me a good growth, sales growth metric to use. So I looked for anything over 20% for that difference between this year and next year. And so that's nice double digit sales growth there. Um, and then I wanted volume to be over 100,000 so I didn't get any super small caps here. And then for the value, then I added the value on top of all that with a PE under 15. And I didn't know if I would find anything with a 15 or if I would need to go higher to like a 20 but I thought I'd try with the 15 first to see what was out there. So what happened when I ran that screen? Well, I, I did get stocks and more than I thought, even using the 15 and with the Zach's number one ranks. So I got 13 companies under the screens. So that's not too bad with the number one rank, with the high sales growth, with the style score, 
with the volume over 100,000 and then adding the PE under 15. So this is kind of unique, unique stocks right now in this pandemic era. But once I took a look at the list, you shouldn't be surprised at like what's on there. Um, because these are so these have to be areas where um, it's a hot area, the market's not really paying any attention to it. The earnings estimates are on the rise and it has to have some kind of, you know, the very good growth sales growth metrics. So it's like, again, in some kind of hot industry where the market's like, meh, we don't really care about that right now. So it's not technology. There wasn't any technology on the list. Not surprising because we've got that value component in there. If I took off the value, I probably might have some tech memes in there. But with the value, not getting any tech. Um, but let's dive right in because I don't want to keep you in suspense any longer about like which ones made this list. I took out five out of the 13. And I started with, not surprising, the home builders. Now, I know I feel like I talk about the home builders almost every week on the Value Investor Podcast, but that is because they are values. And we're talking about not even PEs of 15. Some of them have PEs of single digits right now. Those earnings estimates are on the march higher, like sharply higher, like big time higher. But revenue growth is double digits here and looking real strong year over year and last year's housing market was actually pretty good so to still be doing double digits again this year on the sales growth on the revenue side is pretty strong now we also just heard from the national association of builders on their sentiment on their index that's a monthly index and it spiked higher again for last month and is now still at 35 year highs and that 35 years covers a lot of really hot housing markets, including the housing bubble, when the builder sentiment didn't even get this strong. So good things are happening in housing. There were two housing stocks on the list of 13, and I did include both of them here because the fundamentals are just so good right now. So the first one is one I've talked about, MI Homes, M-H-O is the ticker there. Its PE is only seven right now. Sales for this year, 2020, expected to be up 10.5%. So I didn't get the 20 on just this year, but another 2.57 for next year. So the combination is pretty decent there. Earnings growth, I did take a look at it, even though we didn't screen for that specifically, but earnings growth of 36% here in 2020. Now these shares are up 17% year to date. Not surprising, most of the home builders are have rallied at least off their coronavirus lows. Some are up bigger than others for the year. Um, this one has market cap of 1.3 billion. So it's on somewhat the smaller size and it is a small cap. Um, but again, all the home builders just seem just really strong demand from you know the millennials to the Gen Xers and even the baby boomers and across all geographies right here. So MI Homes, M-H-O. Then the second one is Meritage Homes. There's a lot with the M's here, but Meritage is M-T-H. They have a PE of 11. They're a little bit bigger, 3.9 billion. So this is a mid cap. I like the mid caps here. 2020 sales expected to be up 16.4%, 2021, 8.2. So real good sales growth here. Earnings expected to be up 42% this year. Year to date, the shares were up 70%. And I actually had to like refresh my my screen on the, the chart for the year to date because I was like, that can't be right. Year to date, it's up 70% off the coronavirus lows. Yeah, 70%, but year to date, but no, these are up year to date 70%. Still cheap, still with all the good fundamentals. So those are the two home builders, Meritage, MTH, MI Homes, MHO. And then switching over to the auto sector, we've also talked about these guys, the retail side of the autos, not General Motors, Ford, Tesla, those guys, not the manufacturers, but the retailers, those who are selling new and used autos and doing the car repairs. So the, the pick this week is Sonic Automotive, S-A-H, not to be confused 
fused with the burger chain. So there are two Sonics out there. This is the automotive one, SAH. PE is just 12. Sales are expected to be down this year because they did have uh, you know, some difficulties right when the coronavirus hit. And so sales took a little bit of a hit there, but they've come out of that, but still down 5.7% this year, but really spiking again next year up 14%. Earnings growth expected to really accelerate here up 29% in 2020. It has a market cap of $1.8 billion. So it's on the bigger small cap side, let's call it. If we're, if we're doing small caps up to $2 billion, bigger small cap. Year to date, these shares are up 33%. So they have had a run, but I still like these auto retailers because they're cheap and the demand for cars is still out there. So that was our third stock. Now going into number four, this is one, I don't think I've talked about it before. Maybe I have once, but it was a while ago, but things have changed. It is hot for this one. So number four stock is Stewart Information Services, ticker S, T as in Tom, C as in cat, STC. 1.1 billion market cap, which is why most of us have never heard of it because it's pretty small but it is a global title insurance and real estate services company. So title insurance, very hot right now. Anybody getting a mortgage, buying a house or refining has to have title insurance and they, they do the check on it. So second quarter, they saw operating revenue up 9%. Uh, on the strong refis and purchase transactions. And they said the second quarter was, quote, the strongest in recent history. Not surprising. Anything related to housing is hot. Now, second quarter was also their pandemic quarter. They are an essential business, so they stayed open, but housing did take a little bit of a hit in the beginning of the second quarter as those lockdowns were happening. Even though they remained open, you could buy a house, but most people were still on the sidelines. But then it exploded as the quarter went on. It got hotter and hotter. So I'm thinking it's pretty hot over the summer here as even more people are out buying and are doing the refis right now with those record low mortgage rates. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm expecting another good quarter coming up here. Not surprising it's a Zach's number one. And not surprising that earnings expected to be up 48% this year. Now, I did take a look at what that actually meant. So the analysts, there's only one analyst that we have on Zacks.com on this company. They're looking for 407 now versus 275 last year. So the earnings definitely spiking here and should be hot into the end of the year, as I said. Now, we didn't have any sales estimates on Zex.com, but we may have so on the back end because on the screen, it was still looking for 48% on that year over year sales growth. So sales should still be, you know, double digits here and strong, even though it's not showing up on <laughs> Zex.com for whatever reason. But PE still cheap, 10.6 here. So again, these are all well under the 15 that I was screening for, which is somewhat of a surprise. Now year to date, these shares are only up 6.4%. And I put that on that it's insurance. So that seems kind of boring, right? And it's an unknown company and it's title insurance, which again, in normal circumstances is not all that glamorous. But right now with housing super hot, and record low mortgage rates, this could be an interesting play on everything going on in housing. If you don't wanna buy home builders, some of these services that are you know, definitely seeing the big demand um, are also in play. So that's Stewart Information Services, STC. And then the fifth stock is a regular retailer. And some of you have tweeted this at me because of what it's doing in such a strong quarter that it had. So it's Sportsman's Warehouse, SPWH. They have 106 stores across the US. I've not been in one because there isn't one in Illinois. The closest one is in Kalamazoo, Michigan to me here in Chicago. So I'd have to drive over there if I wanna to go to Sportsman Warehouse, but it does all the outdoor stuff. It's one of those big outdoor mega stores and it's killing it right now because if we can't be inside 
you know, during the pandemic, we want to be outside. So everybody's buying the tents, the sleeping bags. We're going out to go fishing. We'll rent that house on that lake and we'll do outdoor activities. And I'm wondering, you know, how it's going to translate into winter. Will all their snowshoes get bought up? I've been hearing snowshoes are super hot right now already. <laughs> I should get mine before it's too late. But you might want to check into that cross country skis, any of that winter gear, ice skates. You might want to start ordering it now and you might order it through Sportsman Warehouse. So it's still super cheap right here. PE is at nine. It's only 605 million market cap. So this is the smallest of the companies that I'm featuring here today. Fiscal 2021 sales are expected to be up 39%. And then fiscal 2022, so that's going into next year, starting in spring of next year, they are analysts expecting to see a little bit of a pullback down 7.8% off of this really hot year. But it will be hard for them to do year over year, you know, sales growth coming off of what is unprecedented, uh, you know, activity really in outdoor goods. Earnings expected to be up 229% um, this year. Yes, that's right, 229%. They just reported second quarter, fiscal second quarter on September 2nd. It was, quote, record breaking, unquote. Same store sales, this is in their stores, up 61%, e-commerce up 300%. All categories were hot. Hunting and shooting up the hottest. And that is because of the protests and things going, plus hunting, outdoor activity. Firearms were up 123%, ammunition up 75%, but camping, that category up 46%, everybody buying those tents. Fishing up 45, footwear even up 30%. And they said it was like waders and like the boots you wear when you have to go into the river. So if you're fishing, you're walking out there, you need the special boots up 30%, apparel even up 19%. Some of that was the camouflage apparel, and that is for the hunting and outdoor activities as well. You're probably buying some, you know, hiking uh, type of apparel and, you know, some of these specialty outdoorsy apparel that you need. Um, so that you're not bitten or you can withstand the rain, all that kind of stuff. So everything is operating on all cylinders for these kind of outdoor uh, sporting type of companies, Sportsman Warehouse, SPWH, year to date sales up or year to date, the shares are up 72%. So everybody's in on the story and it's hot, but PE is still only at nine as those earnings estimates are really spiking here off of these record breaking quarters. Can they keep this up, this level of record breaking over the next couple of quarters? Uh, yeah, maybe, because we're still gonna be outside for quite a bit of time here. And so we're all gonna be buying anything we can having to do with outdoor when it comes in stock. A lot of things are on back order. <laughs> we can't even get them. So when they come in, we are gonna be buying them. So this is a play on that. And um, also the strong firearms category, which usually does really well before a presidential election as well, on top of protests going on. So both of those things, if you're not into the firearms category, then this is not one for you. And it would be excluded from those ETFs that exclude you know, firearms types companies. So. Sportsman Warehouse, SPWH. So there's some interesting names on this list, as I said, including some of these retailers. And then we got the housing play. No tech was on here and no finance because they're certainly not gonna have just this, the revenue growth side is not gonna be there. But um, we're getting some legit sales growth with these value plays, but they are in areas that the market is not totally ignoring, or else these stocks would not be up here to date, obviously, but they're not on everybody's lips. I don't hear anybody on CNBC talking about, you know, steward information services, or even really the home builders with the exception of maybe the very biggest ones, but they're not, they're not really focusing on it here um, like they should be. So as value investors, these are areas we can kind of, you know, sniff around for bargains with that growth component and I know some of you have been reluctant to get into anything that has to do with 
you know, the home builders or even just the pandemic type of plays, which some of these are, but these trends are still going to be with us, as I said, through the end of the year. So um, it's not too late to get into some of these. I myself just recently bought one of the home builders, not, not one of these two, but one of the others that's also has the good fundamentals. And I just did a podcast on the market edge with Kevin Cook about everything going on on the home side, the home front that's super hot right now. So you might want to check out that podcast. We have a couple other stock recommendations and ETFs in that podcast. But as always, um, you know, I'm snooping around to try to find you the value stocks that are out there. And there are still some out there. So these are all really cheap stocks. Let's recap what the tickers are. MI Homes is the cheapest here with a P of seven. MHO is the ticker. Meritage Homes or Meritage, I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but I like the French pronunciation, MTH. Sonic Automotive, not to be confused with the Sonic Burger chain, but Sonic Automotive, S-A-H. Then we had the Steward, the title insurers, STC. And then we finish up with Sportsman's Warehouse, as we all want to be outside, SPWH. But be sure to subscribe because every week I'm going to try to find you value stocks and we're going to talk about what's happening on the value side and uh, some good things going on in the value universe like this week. Good things, good value stocks with growth, with sales growth. So you want to subscribe, get us on Spotify, get us on Apple Podcasts, get two for one and get the Zach's Market Edge podcast on SoundCloud. But be sure to get us somewhere, and I'll see you again next week with some more value stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.